Thank you. Thank you, President Spangler. Even pioneers need pioneers. It is a pleasure to pay tribute to my predecessors. Glenn Bushy, president of Asheville Biltmore College, William Highsmith, the first chancellor of UNCA, and former chancellors David Brown and Samuel Schumann. At critical junctures in UNCA's history, we have been guided by able and respected interim chancellors, Arnold King, Roy Carroll, and Larry Wilson. I'm delighted that Drs. Brown, Carroll, and Wilson, and Mrs. Eileen Highsmith are with us today. Would you please stand so that we can thank you for your service to UNCA? To those who have brought the University of North Carolina to such a high regard, I express my admiration. The excellence of the UNC system is a beacon for all of us as we strive to sustain the excellence of its components. President Spangler, you have said that the position of Chancellor offers new vistas for pioneering. In accepting that responsibility and that challenge, I am acutely aware of those who, as our motto says, have lifted their eyes to the mountains and forged the university around us. First, the students, past and present. You have benefited from this institution, but you have also helped to shape it. To the faculty, administrators, and staff of UNCA and its predecessors, your dedication to teaching and learning your keen concern for the welfare of students are the very foundations of our endeavor. To the faculty, staff, students, and community members who have served untiringly on the installation committee, your work has been in the best tradition of UNCA, and I thank you. Finally, UNCA is privileged to have an intricate mosaic of support. The citizens of the region, the North Carolina General Assembly, the UNC Board of Governors, the leaders of the general administration, our trustees, our alumni, the members of the UNCA Foundation, parents of our students, and the many, many UNCA friends. From a distance, this mosaic is a blend of wisdom and work, guidance and generosity. At close range, each gem is integral to the picture. Since I have been here, I have come to know many of you in the mosaic and your key roles. I am grateful to all of you. Such involvement, support, and friendship are epitomized by Morris and Leah Carpen, who joined us in the procession today. Leah is truly one of our pioneers, one of the very first recipients of our Masters of Liberal Arts. Across the Quad, Carpen Hall attests to their commitment to education Morris and Leah, your generosity flows from your belief in the basic goodness of humankind. I know that you see education as the means to foster that goodness. To you and all of our friends, we are indeed grateful. On a personal note, please allow me to express my deep gratitude to those whose love and support have sustained and encouraged me. Thank you, DeWitt. Thank you to our family and our wonderfully supportive friends. Some of you may be wondering why it took so long to get me installed. Traditionally, chancellors are installed during their first year. Why did we wait until the beginning of the second year? I have said that people were waiting to see if I worked out. At UNCA, we have a tradition that is really more important than a timetable. We hold our ceremonies on the terrace of the D. Hyden Ramsey Library, the physical and symbolic heart of the university. We delayed this installation until renovation of the library was complete to honor our tradition and to invite you to celebrate with us this new threshold of knowledge. Ceremonies, too, are thresholds in the lives of individuals and institutions. Across them, we enter a future 
which can be both beckoning and challenging. Standing before the portals of Ramsey Library, I want this ceremony to be a threshold that you and I cross together. The library doors open into the past, examples of the best that has been thought and said and written and achieved. There are books here and works of art. The library doors are also open unto the future, electronic technologies, new media, new ways of accessing uh, information. Perhaps most importantly, what we see when we walk through these doors are people, people engaged in the essential activities of the liberal arts experience. They are reading, they are writing, they are thinking, they are exchanging ideas. Yes, they're talking in the library. There are designated quiet areas as well. They're seeking information. They are seeking wisdom. They are assisting others in the search. All of our academic disciplines are represented here. A great variety of people are here, men and women of all ages, faculty and students, staff and administrators, people working for degrees, people from the community. People from every point on the compass, from every facet of the ethnic and cultural kaleidoscope, from every perspective on the horizon of belief. The library is both microcosm and macrocosm of this university and the liberal arts experience. It embodies the spirit of free inquiry. Its doors are open to all. When I search for a common thread of all of these elements of the liberal arts experience, I reflect on the concept of creativity. A student searching for words to describe the touch and taste of a peach is, whether he knows it or not, learning more about writing. He is learning cre creativity as well. The student devising ways to follow the flow of task in an organization whether she knows it or not, is learning more than management skill. She is learning creativity. Students developing a model of voting patterns are learning the political scientist technique of correlating standard variables. But when they have to account for the unexplained variances, they are learning creativity. Students and faculty in the natural sciences are creative when they apply traditional methods of chemical analyses to track harmful substances in the environment. Historians change our ideas about the American West by documenting African American and Jewish cowboys. Visual artists and biologists team up to study desert ecology. An economist revises our thinking about antebellum Southern women in a study of women-owned businesses. A composer and mathematician apply fractals to music. I see UNCA making connections, thinking outside the boundaries, finding new answers for old questions, finding new questions for old answers. These are the hallmarks of creativity. These are hallmarks of the liberal arts experience. The habits of creative thinking, which liberal education fosters are, I believe, the crucial factors to the future of this country and this globe. The world faces seemingly intractable problems, environmental threats, diminishing resources, untreatable diseases, wars, devastations, ideological clashes, the coarsening of culture, crises of confidence in political leaders, spiritual exhaustion. Where will the solutions to these problems come from if not from creative thinking? Where will the creative thinkers come from if not from our education system? What then is our responsibility as educators? How do we equip our students with the knowledge and skills to be productive and fulfilled professionally and personally? How do we encourage them to develop their creativity for the good of humankind? The liberal arts experience seeks both of these goals. We immerse students in the past and we challenge them to speculate about the future. 
We offer them close interactions with faculty so that they can learn that they are members of the community of learning. We ask them to work collaborative, collaboratively with other students so they develop tolerance and appreciation for the contributions of others. We encourage them to learn outside the classroom so that they take responsibility for their own learning and realize that learning goes on, not just in school, but throughout life. We ask the scientists to learn about the arts, the artists to learn about society, the social scientists to learn philosophy and literature, and the humanist to understand mathematics. More importantly, we ask all to understand that this liberal arts ideal of a core of common culture is not some quaint notion left over from the Renaissance. It is an urgent imperative for the 21st century. If we do not see the connections, if we do not find the connections among the different ways of thinking, among different kinds of people, we may perish. Where are these creative connections best forged? As I think about creativity in the liberal arts, I am struck by the image of a crucible. And for those of you not fortunate enough to be taking a, a class in chemistry at UNCA right now, let me refresh your memory. A crucible is a dish-like container made of porcelain and capable of withstanding intense heat. Substances are changed by high temperatures within the protection of the crucible. In these times of extreme heat for our society, the liberal arts function as a crucible that supports positive change. A liberal arts education protects fundamental knowledge, protects humane values, while encouraging the creative thinking so essential for new solutions and new truths. A crucible enables change without being consumed by it. The enduring quality of the liberal arts may be their greatest promise. A crucible is a very practical vessel. Its products are utilitarian. Likewise, a liberal arts education has a very practical side. No individual, no segment of society escapes change. Armed with the habits of creative thinking, liberal arts graduates in all walks of life can accommodate change in their personal lives. Even better, they can lead change for the advancement of society. Over 200 years ago, North Carolina took the lead in opening the doors to higher education. Now North Carolina is again taking the lead by opening doors here at UNCA to a liberal arts university that is a public institution. Affordable, human in scale, focused on undergraduates, devoted to teaching and learning, committed to excellence, dedicated to the public good. We are resolute in our commitment to this mission. The challenge now for UNCA is to take the lead in articulating to the state and the nation what a liberal arts education in the public sector means. We are not the private halls of ivy. We are the public portals of excellence. The foundation for national leadership has been built by a creative faculty, by our students and administrators. To chart our next steps, we must open new vistas for pioneering, and we must open them together. So from where I stand, please join me in an imaginary trip. Our guiding motto will be the insight attributed to Albert Einstein. We can accomplish what we can imagine. The year is 2002. UNCA has embarked on a year-long celebration of our 75th anniversary. We start our tour of this nationally recognized public liberal arts university in the library. In 2002, we realized that the opening of this facility in 1995 set a standard of excellence for the whole university. From that moment, we began to imagine how the entire campus could look, feel, and function. We can accomplish what we can imagine. 
We can imagine ourselves using computers to view a high-definition image of a painting from the Ashmolean Museum at Oxford University. We can see summer programs at Oxford and other institutions throughout the world that are growing in the number of UNCA students who take part in them. As we begin our walk, notice the magnificent avenues of maples that line either side of the quadrangle. I love to see students sitting there, reading, talking under these trees. Students come to UNCA for many reasons, but I think many are here because of the mountains. Many bring a love of nature with them and many develop it once they are here. That affinity for nature translates into a strong concern for the environment. By the way, our grand finale of our 75th anniversary year, we're going to name this quadrangle for our first $3 million donor. And if you'll see me during the reception, I'll let you get in line for that. <laughs> there is also a grand finale of our successful multi-million dollar capital campaign that began several years earlier. In 2002, we have a solid endowment for that extra margin of funding that's so important in achieving excellence. In 2002, I'm seeing more students at campus events. While we're definitely becoming a more residential campus, our commuter students and our faculty, staff, and administrators come back to the campus night and on weekends for concerts, speakers, and plays. The fact that they can drop off their children at a university-affiliated daycare center nearby has helped. Equally important, when DeWitt and I go to Theater UNCA or to the Justice Center for a basketball game, I'm delighted to see so many of our friends from Asheville, Hendersonville, and all of Western North Carolina. You take pride in UNCA's emergence into the national spotlight. We are proud that we have so much to offer you and your communities. We are pleased that you feel welcome and well served. Our cultural events on campus have always been a strong draw for the region, and you'll notice that in the year 2002, we're expanding our facilities to accommodate our growing programs in art, drama, and music. As we are passing the expanded Justice Center, I heard one of you mention that you had seen the Bulldogs beat the Tar Heels for the third straight year. <laughs> I think we should always have fun with these speeches. <laughs> Did you know that our women's tennis team is headed for a national NCAA ch championship? The athletic scholarships that our good friends have contributed, contributed make us as competitive in athletics as we are in academics. As we go through the newly renovated Highsmith Center, notice what a hub of activity it is for students of all ages for those who live on campus and those who live elsewhere. Their involvement here shows that UNCA is indeed focused on students. We'll walk through the breezeway of Phillips Hall, which so perfectly frames Mount Pisgah. Our administrators and staff here now work in air-conditioned comfort. <laughs> I wish I had time to introduce you to the uh, new Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs who came on board in 1996. What a surge of energy we felt when that person arrived. Some of the Vice Chancellor's initiatives have changed the way we do things. All of the Vice Chancellor's initiative have reinforced our fundamental beliefs in who we are and what we are. A quick stroll through Rhodes Hall so that you can see the new science laboratories. If you were a student here in 1995, you'd be surprised at how contemporary this building now looks. You'll be glad to know that it and Carmichael are also air-conditioned and that all of our academic buildings are well-equipped. You expect to see up-to-date equipment in Rhodes and Robinson, but you might be surprised at all of the artworks in the halls and classrooms. That's true of all of our buildings now. The arts at UNCA are not confined to a single course or to special places. They are campus-wide in their presence. As a result of the modernization and expansion of our physical facilities, 
and an outgrowth of our visibility at the national stage, UNCA has become the summer home for conferences, workshops, and expanded academic offerings. They are geared to all sorts of people, professionals, business people, retirees, college and pre-college students. We're back now at Ramsey Library. Look over the quadrangle and see those folks back in 1995, what they were working for, for the students of 2002. As I see them hurrying to class, playing Frisbee, and I suspect Frisbee will still be with us in 2002, I'm struck by what an extraordinary group they are, how many cultural, ethnic, geographic backgrounds they come from, how enthusiastic they are about liberal learning, and how much fun they're having. I've just seen the latest statistics, dated September 15, 2002, and I'm delighted to report that our graduation rates are now second to none in the state. So while we're having fun, our students are succeeding in their educational goals. That is, after all, what we're here for. Now, you might think that after such an Alice in Wonderland trip into the imagination, I would be reluctant to return to reality, but not at all. The UNCA that we have imagined together is within our grasp. We can become what we imagine. We have already begun, and I can't wait to continue. Of course, making the imaginary UNCA into the real UNCA will require thoughtful definition of our goals, careful planning, collaboration, and creativity. Of course, it will require the courage for hard questions and the integrity for answers that are right for the institution, not simply for any one program. Can we do it? Of course we can. How will we begin? Some of our planning is already underway. Our marvelously supportive foundation board has a timetable for defining what we would call a comprehensive campaign because the funds that are needed for a margin of excellence extend to every facet of this university. Our energetic and committed board of trustees has des designated an outstanding consulting firm to develop a new master plan for the growth of the campus. With strong involvement from the faculty, staff, administrators, students, and community, that process should provide one set of blueprints for going from dream to reality. The highest priority for the new Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs will be to lead a process for another kind of master plan, how UNCA moves forward in its central enterprise, undergraduate teaching and learning. Again, with strong involvement from all of us, that process will guide us from dream to reality. I came to UNCA because I saw great strengths here and great potential. As we plan, we will build on our strengths. We will nourish programs that have, of a, have achieved national prominence. We will cultivate new initiatives that can add to our strengths. I see areas of need and potential that I recommend we explore. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Creative individuals have begun work in these areas so we can capitalize on their leadership. Other creative individuals will suggest other areas of need and potential. The planning process will be the crucible in which all of our thinking comes together. One of our greatest needs is increasing the diversity of our campus. My predecessors have given this a high priority. I do too. Closely allied to diversity is the need to increase retention and graduation rates. We attract serious and able students. We need to keep them. Of great potential for bonding students more closely to UNCA and the liberal arts program uh, is a program that we're calling the first year experience. Imaginative planning has been done. Let's move ahead. The opening of an expanded health and physical education center should be the catalyst for tapping the potential of our health and fitness program. We've been an innovative national leader in this area. Let's recapture the lead. The North Carolina Center for Creative Retirement, sparked by Dave and Lynn Brown, 
is already recognized for its service to the region and the state. The next step will be to develop an allied affiliate that serves the nation. The North Carolina Center will keep its focus on the state. The National Center will focus more broadly on its outreach. I believe the funding from national sources is out there. I know that the talent and determination are right here. A new minor in multimedia studies, drawing on our strengths in computer science, physics, mass communication, drama, music, and art, is ready to launch. And we can already see the potential for a new major degree program. This is very much in the spirit of liberal arts at UNCA, where we make connections among fundamental disciplines to create new interdisciplinary programs. Sam Schumann and Larry Wilson helped UNCA to imagine a center for public service, not a building, but a concept. The center for public service could encourage our students to expand their commitment to the common good, no matter what their major. The Center for Public Service could become the research and development affiliate that links the expertise of the university to the needs of the community and region. Let's see if what Sam, Larry, and others imagined we can accomplish. Coming from the imaginary to the real takes resources, both human and financial. As chancellor, I get to seek those resources. As chancellor, I also have the satisfying task of saying thank you to those who have helped to secure the resources. It is a pleasure to express our gratitude to the General Assembly for endorsing the Board of Governors designation of UNCA as the state's public liberal arts university. The funding allocated the last legislative session to implement this designation is one more element in the crucible. I've asked, with you, I've asked you to imagine with me some things, and now I would like to share some realities with you. I have given the go-ahead for a fiber optics network to link our campus and connect us to the world. As soon as the planning and approval processes are complete, we will be begin construction. I'm delighted to announce also today that through the generosity and public spiritedness of two donors, our endowment for scholarships will increase by over $1 million. Both of our donors wish to remain anonymous, but their gifts and careful estate planning benefit our students today and far into the future. One of those donors was a pioneer, a member of our first board of trustees when we became a state institution. He was one of those visionaries who walked this site when it was an abandoned farm and imagined a university here. What he imagined, we are becoming. All of us here today, all of us who will come after, are profoundly grateful. As I have said, we are not the private halls of Ivy, we are public portals of excellence. And excellence is not something for only a few, or that only a few can understand, and in which only a few can achieve. The state of North Carolina decided that a liberal arts university of excellence would be an opportunity for all students of ability and determination. Even as affordable as this public liberal arts experience is compared to private schools, it is still out of reach for many students some of whom are the first in their families to attend college. Scholarships for students of high academic promise are now UNCA's highest priority as we seek private funding. The gifts that I have announced today may well become the nucleus of our capital campaign, but for today we are extremely grateful for them and scholarship support. We'll move ahead. Finally, Nicholas Henderson, the distinguished British diplomat, has said that in public life, you need faith, hope, and stamina, and that the greatest of these is stamina. <laughs> faith is actually my middle name, and I have great faith in the future of UNCA. My hope 
is that you will add your creativity to the uh, crucible for, pro for uh, positive change. I pledge to you my stamina in helping us build the UNCA we can imagine. We're on the threshold. Let's go.